some recording. Let's bow our heads for prayer as we begin our study. Oh dear God, our Heavenly Father, what a wonderful rest we have. And early in the morning, you have sent us showers of blessing to remind us that you love us. You refresh us physically and spiritually. And I pray that you will give us the Holy Spirit this morning to enlighten our eyes and our hearts to grasp the important message of choosing life and help us to know the implication of it and follow Jesus all the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let me share screen. Okay, I hope you can see. All right. What does choosing life entails in the book of Deuteronomy? Now, the historical dating of this Old Testament book is somewhere in the uh, 1400 BC. Okay, it's the fifth book of the Christian Old Testament and the Jewish Torah. Okay, the five books of Moses are called the Pentateuch. The Israelites are on the plain of Moab shortly before they plan on entering the promised land and ending the 40 years of wandering in the desert. So this book is actually looking back of how God has led the first generation Israelites. And this book is also about looking forward and looking forward on how they can be faithful and not to repeat the mistakes of their forefathers. And uh, chapter 30 is the final speech in the land of Moab. And today we are studying chapter 30 because chapter 30 is actually the central message of looking forward uh, as they enter the promised land. So in chapters 31 to 34, Moses was installed as the successor of Moses. And then later on, we found that he, he died. Okay, when he died, he, he did not die of a physical ailment nor lack of strength, but he was still alert. Okay, we asked Mr. Sung to read this for us. Mr. Sung? Good morning, everyone. Morning. This day I call the heaven and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. Uh, 1319. Yeah, you can see eh? Moses when he said this kind of thing, I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you. This is a very important admonition. Probably it is the most important of all. That he has to call upon heavens to admonish them. What does it mean? to call upon heaven. So it must be a very important message. Okay, It concerns life and death. Not just physical life and death, but spiritual life and death. Okay. It is actually a message given to somebody who was about to die. And Moses was told by God, hey, it's time for you to die. Why did he die? You all know. He disobeyed God instead of Speaking to the rock, he struck the rock twice and God was unhappy with him. And with great sadness, he, okay, with great sadness, he reluctantly admonished them. I have chosen life, but I make a mistake. So I don't want you to make the same mistake of disobeying. Uh, I found this cartoon in a very interesting manner. It says here, if you keep them busy with basic needs, they will forget about the freedom they lost. So in other words, uh, while we are on earth, huh, we are actually lost, you know, all of us are lost. Uh, after this life on earth, huh, if we have no hope of eternal life, we are lost. We have nothing left in our lives, we have no hope. So therefore, instead of making full of use of our life on earth to prepare for eternal life. 
many of us are busy pursuing earthly comforts, earthly survival. And you look at this prisoner. Uh, he was so used to being a prisoner that he thinks that he is sentenced to life in prison. And he's only concerned about satisfying his physical hunger. Whereas the key to open spiritual freedom, physical freedom, he's not aware. Okay, he's not aware. So it's a very telling message. So Moses offered two paths to Israel, the second generation who came out of Egypt. One leading to life, another leading to death. So today, do you have the same options? Is there a third or fourth option? Is it important to make a decision? Or can we just go with the flow, follow what people usually do? So the message in this book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 is very clear. The most important piece of advice for us was given by God to Moses. Therefore, choose life. Okay. So what does it entail when we choose life? Okay, this will be the sections we'll be covering. The ability to choose, middle ground, two options, easy choice, and final decision. Now, with this in mind, eh, I like to do an advertisement. Uh, this advertisement is, this afternoon, I will be giving a talk eh, on the Bible principles in anti-aging. Okay, if you are interested to attend, uh, I will send you the link now in case I forget. Eh? Okay, I'll copy the link. I'll be speaking on why is it important eh, to uh, follow, to choose life. Okay, why is it important to choose life using the biblical way? Now, have you seen it in the chat? So please copy the link and later on you can join us at 2.30. Okay, enough of advertisement. Huh? Let's go back to our study. Okay, what will, be, what will I be covering? Okay, I'll be covering uh, Adam and Eve's diet, Moses' diet and lifestyle. New Testament diet and lifestyle. And my diet and lifestyle. So I'll be talking about natural and uh, synthetic supplements and the health devices I use to keep myself healthy. And I'll be talking about aging and immunity as well as toxicity and liver detox. So this is what I'll be covering for one and a half years of, one and a half hours of presentation. Okay. Can we ask uh, Elder Hadiano to read this for us? Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning. The ability to choose. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of, that you eat of it, you shall surely die. This is actually the first time before the fall of Adam and Eve, they were given a choice to choose life or to choose death. As you know, the story was a sad story. They choose to die. Okay, they choose to disobey. So there are many types of living beings on earth, but only human beings can make moral decisions. This you see, God created so many creatures on earth. Only human beings, only Adam and Eve were given a choice. The rest of the animals, they have no choice. The rest of the animals, God instilled in them instinct. Okay, that means they are already born what to do. They are already born to know how to build a nest, how to take care of their young. They are already born on how to mate, okay, uh, with 
the opposite gender. So this natural ability, they also have the instinct to find food. So God didn't give animals the ability to choose which food they could eat. However, he forbade humans from eating a specific fruit and told them of the consequences of disobeying. But you know, Adam and Eve chose death, they disobeyed and they lost the access to the tree of life. So they were given a choice to eat all sorts of fruits and then the main fruit from the tree of life. They also eat, but they were also given a choice. The choice is to eat the tree of life or to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. As you know, they fell because they disobeyed. They chose death. Nevertheless, God intervened to avoid leaving the fate of humanity to the consequences of that decision. So he conceived a plan to give us access to the tree of life through Jesus. And that is the wonderful good news. In fact, the last chapter, the last few chapters of Deuteronomy talks about Moses telling these people, come back to God, choose life. But in case you fall and worship other gods, God will destroy you, but he will also forgive you. Okay, what happened if, when they chose death? Uh, GM, can you read this for us? Happy Sabbath, everyone. Everyone. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil. Now, lest he reach out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever, therefore the Lord God sent him out from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. Genesis yeah. 3, 22 to 23. This is an important uh consequence they did not die immediately but they suffered the consequence of disobedience they, they were not allowed to go into the garden of eden to work anymore they have no access to the tree of life and therefore they begin to die okay they did not die straight away but they die spiritually they die physically they are getting older and older okay and they lost the ability and their vital strength uh, begin to deteriorate. Adam and Adam lived for 930 years. Okay. Noah lived for 600 over years. Abraham 175. Moses 120. Come to David's time, he said 70. If you got extra strength, 80. And those who got extra grace live up to 90 or 100. So you can see. Uh, throughout generations, our genes deteriorated. But there is a promise, there is this good news. Okay, Catherine, can you read this uh, two verses for us? Okay, good morning. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and many and, and may enter in by the gates into the city. Yeah, you can see. Eh? <laughs> what do they have to overcome? They have to overcome their sinful nature. Overcome temptation. Adam and Eve did not overcome the temptation, right? But for us, when we overcome, we have the right to to, the, to eat of the tree of life, which Adam and Eve were given in the first place, and which is in the midst of the paradise of God. This garden of Eden was no longer on earth. It was taken to heaven. So when we go to heaven, we have a choice to eat of the tree of life again. And what is the requirement right now for us to eat the tree of life? Is to do his commandments. The same command that were mentioned in Deuteronomy. So God saved us by grace through faith and our faith is exhibited through the keeping of commandments. Okay, 
So the Bible is very clear. We cannot enter heaven through cheap grace. Can we ask uh, Lawrence to read this for us? He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Yeah. First John 5, John. So if you want to choose life, you must choose to have Jesus in your life. The Bible presents only two options. Huh? We can only choose between life and death. Either you have Jesus or you don't. No wonder Jesus said this is eternal life, that you know God. Okay, and Jesus Christ will be a set. Is there a middle ground? No. Can we be part of life and death at the same time? No. Can we be neutral? No. Can we avoid making a stand and therefore make no decision at all? No. In fact, if you don't make a decision to choose life, by default, you are choosing death. So John is very clear about this. Those who accept Jesus as their savior has life. And those who doesn't are dead. So making no decision or postponing it is like choosing death. There are no more options or therefore choose life. No, I, in my ministry as a pastor, I have seen a lot of, quite a few of the members or visitors. They come to church regularly, but they don't, they like to hear the sermons. They enjoy the fellowship. They enjoy the potluck. And then they also take up Bible study. But they just don't want to be baptized. They say, I'm not ready. Okay? They keep postponing in their younger days, in their adult years, and in their senior years. And there are some of them, they will just come regularly without any commitment. And Jesus is very clear. He who has a son, has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. So, same here, we need to read this. And this is very important. Uh, there's a lady called Fiona. Can you read for us this text? Fiona? Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, but let your statement yes be yes and no be no. Anything more than this come from evil. Matthew 5 verse 37. You know, I interact with a lot of people through networking and I meet friends. So when they invite me to go to a certain place or when I invite them to a certain event, they will say, see first. Lah. Sometimes I'm also guilty eh, of saying that, see first. Uh, when I want to join, I'll let you know. So there's no commitment. We are living in this world there where people are afraid of making commitment. Uh, Jesus is very clear. Either you join or you don't join. Okay, let your yes be yes or your no be no. Don't give people false hope. If you say yes, you better do it. If you say no, uh, at least got hope. Uh. After that, you say yes. Because there are two sons. I remember the parable of two sons. The father said to the son, go to work. Uh, the, the first son said, no, I won't. And later he changed his mind. He said, okay, I'll go. The other son said, yes, I'll go. But he didn't show up. So a lot of people are giving good answers. Okay. Are you coming? Yes, but they show up. And some people say, no, but show up. And then there are people who say, ah, see first, lah. maybe. Okay. So when it comes to salvation and choice in the path of salvation, there is no see first. The time will come when you have to decide. Okay. So, see, I said before you today, life and good, death and evil. So, Life is equivalent to good. It means if you want to choose life, you must live a good life. If you want to choose death, you follow the evils of the world. 
So that's the difference. God offer is quite simple. Either you choose to do good and choose life. He explained what good is. He says, okay, uh, Pearl, can you read this for us? What good is? Yes, good morning, everyone. So um, he explained what good is. That I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments, that you may live. Ah, so isn't it very clear? If you want to choose life, uh, you are choosing good. And what is good? To love God. It's a relational decision Okay, to follow Jesus. It's not true following a set of rules. Now, when you love Jesus, you will have fellowship with him and then you will keep his commandment. Notice that the commandments didn't come first. Commandment is a result of having a relationship with Jesus or with God. So loving God gives us life. Death is a natural consequence of living apart from him. Lucifer was the first being to choose death. Why? Because he wants to take over God. And that is a very bad decision. We are all struggling between two options since then. So, therefore, choose life. Eve fell into temptation at eight from the tree of knowledge of good and evil because he leave God aside for that moment. And it's very clear we need to live for God. We have to live for God. So, for this commandment which I command you today is not too mysterious for you, nor is it far off. So, in order to make conscious decisions, we should therefore understand the consequences of each option. And therefore, God explained the consequence of obeying Him and disobeying Him to Israel. He also guaranteed them that he would always be willing to forgive them and give them a second chance. If they ever disobeyed, huh? there, there is a second chance. On the other hand, making this decision is easy. God has loved us so much that it's easy to love him back. And what to do? And to do what he likes in response. It is also easy to know what God likes. It's no mystery as it is clearly written in the Bible. So therefore, choose life. Okay, we, it, this is so important and that we need to read this again. Okay, I'd like to ask uh, Victor to read again. Read this again. Okay, Victor. Okay. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I may have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, and you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him. For he is your life and the length of your days, that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. Yeah. Dwell in this land uh, is actually the promised land. But for us, this land uh, is actually the heavenly Canaan. All right. So the same principle, uh, love God. So love God uh, is not a New Testament teaching. It's actually the Old Testament teaching. So you will hear some Christians say, in the Old Testament, it's about keeping the law. In the New Testament, it's about loving God. So therefore, you put aside the command. That's the wrong teaching. The right teaching is you have to love God and then you have to obey Him. And the result of loving God and obeying Him is the keeping of the Ten Commandments. That is the correct teaching. Okay. Can I ask this question? Eh? Or we ask somebody to uh, uh, read this question. Julius, can you read this for us? And probably answer this question too. What does choosing life involve? I think the, the, the key word is commitment. Ah, okay. Yeah, elaborate. Commitment. What, uh, can you elaborate what is commitment? 
you know, um, when life is, when you choose life, I'm talking, we're talking about choosing eternal life. Yeah. You have, you have to make a choice. Um, God has, well, we, what we've been studying just now, we've been reading and what, and if you read the, the teaching what Jesus is, you either accept me or you don't. There is um, a decision you have to make and, and that decision is to commit your life to God, to Christ. Okay. It's just like in, it's just like in a marriage, a marriage for a marriage to work, there is commitment, mm. right? You um, you cannot go and marry someone, be married, and then go commit adultery, and expect the marriage to work. So marriage to, and that's what our relationship to God is like. It's like a marriage, and that's what uh, Jesus used as a the, the example of marriage. So and that's a commitment, right? Fidelity, commitment is to me is uh, synonymous. Okay, thank you for your. Answer. Anyone else have anything to add? It's a very good answer. Huh? Any other one? Everyone is free to uh, give comments. So what does choosing life involve? Julius say is involving commitment. Okay, when you're committed to do something, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how you feel, you just focus on completing it. Okay, if you are committed to love God, then stick to loving God. Okay, that's a very good answer. Anyone else? Okay, the answer is there already. Huh? Actually, on what we have read, uh, choose life that both you and descendants will live. So there is a goal. Huh? You choose life and you will live. So the, this life uh, involves loving God, obeying Him, and clinging to Him. For He is your life and the length of your days. There is this hymn uh, that says, Jesus is all the world to me. And that's my favorite song, very catchy. Jesus is all the world to me. Okay, It's a very wonderful song. Now, how to cultivate commitment, to strengthen your commitment, is to obey Him. Obedience to God is actually a reinforcement of your commitment, of your choice to, to love Him. You cannot love God uh, cognitively only. It involves your life. You say, it says here, choose life that you may live, you may love the Lord your God and obey Him. Why? You must cling to Him. Why? Because He is your life. So without God, there is no life. So he who has a son has life. Okay, next question. Eh? Okay, we, uh, we go to the next question later. Can we ask Claire to read for us? Claire? Yes. The final decision, then it shall be, if you by any means forget the Lord your God. And let me see here. And sorry, I can't see. And follow other gods and serve them and worship them. I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. Yeah. The consequences of disobedience is actually choosing death. And sometimes our human nature, we fell into temptation. While walking with God, the world becomes more attractive. So we are tempted to forget God and worship idols. Okay. Worship is the key. Eh? It does. Uh, Great controversy. God is a jealous God. He does not accept anything. He does not accept of sharing our worship with anyone or anything else. And when we worship someone or something instead of God, we are choosing evil and death. So worship is 
more than just bowing before an image. It is actually accepting the authority of people or things above gods. And it is a matter of worship. So if you follow something, even if you love your country, even if you love your family members more than God, that is already choosing death. I'm sad to say, uh, uh, this is the reality. And this will happen in the end times uh, when the mark of the beast will impose an authoritative mark against the law of God. However, this decision is not reserved to that. It's not reserved to that moment. We must make the decision between worshipping God or leaving him aside every day. So you have to decide now. You should not wait. Some people say, um, let me sit on the fence first. Let me consider. When the time comes, then I'll let you know. You have to make the decision now. If you don't make the decision now, the chances of not choosing life or choosing God is very great. So therefore, choose life. Now, this is a very important text. Some people say, is it easy to have eternal life or is it difficult? Okay, we ask uh, Siu Gyo. Can you read this for us, Siu Gyo? Morning, uh, Paul. Morning, Pastor. Yeah. Uh, Deuteronomy uh, 30, 11 to 14. The choice of life or death. For this commandment, which I command you today, is not too mysterious for you, nor is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say who will ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it. Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very near you, in your mouth and in your heart, that you may do it. Ah, so what does it tell you, uh, Siu Gyo? Um, Choosing cho cho life, is it easy or difficult? It is uh, a struggle every day, actually, pastors. <laughs> I honestly tell you, it's a struggle every day. Um, uh, I would say that um, it's in our younger days, it's always easy to do what we, we want because we have the strength. And then we have the, as we build up, well, we have our little bit of resources that go along the way and we are more willful. And as we age, uh, for me now, I struggle with handling an Alzheimer husband. Uh, Alzheimer husband. So um, it is like uh, someone was saying, uh, um, you, lo you, you love God, you also must love and keep your commitment to your husband. So sometimes uh, it's like uh, the commandments of God uh, uh, to, uh, to fear him. Uh, commitment to uh, walk that, that tough journey lah, in life with God and then with your partner as he goes through uh, Alzheimer is not an easy one because it will deteriorate. The doctor says normally it's irreversible. So um, yeah, I just want to say that, that uh, God's commandment is like a refreshing to my heart, but it's also, it, uh, it also requires me to obey. Uh, and that is a struggle too lah. Thank you, Pastor. Okay, Silvio, I will pray for you and your husband later on when, when we end this lesson. I also pray that God will give you the strength yeah. to uh, choose life. Okay. Mm. Thank you for your comment. Uh, thank you, Pastor, for your worship, for helping me to worship. <laughs> Next one uh, is uh, GM. Can you ask? Can you read this for us, GM? Romans 10, 6 to 11. But the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, 
that is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. Okay, thank you, GM. Have you realized that this is quoted from Deuteronomy and yet explained in detail and given you an application on how to do it? Mm -hmm. So, how can is it easy to be safe based on this text? What do you uh, think? They say salvation is a decision away, but sanctification is a lifetime. So I agree with Siu Gyok. It's, it's always a challenge. Uh, because we have to die to sin moment by moment. You know, we are, before we think about sanctification, we must think of being justified first, right? Before you can commit to God, you must love God first. I'll give you an example. When you want to date a boyfriend or date somebody, you cannot think about marriage first. You, know? you must spend time with the person to cultivate love. Then the commitment will come, right? So same here. Salvation always comes with the decision. Okay, the, con you, the decision placed before you are the consequences. Uh. Life, okay, do good. Obey his commandments, love God. Death, okay, evil, okay, hopelessness. The consequences is very clear. Choose life. Okay, choose life. The consequence is very clear. But after you choose life, you're not supposed to do it by yourself. You're supposed to do it with God and with the Holy Spirit. Okay, remember, not by your own might, not by might, not by power, but by the His Spirit. Okay, we, today we are not talking about sanctification. Today we are talking about how to be safe how to, to be justified, how easy it is to choose life. That is the point. That, uh, that is the crux of today's study. Okay, this one I need somebody to read. There is a guy called GL. GL, can you read this for us? Are you able to unmute GL? Okay, otherwise we can ask uh, Debbie to read. Who has it easier to choose life? Adam and Eve, the second generation Israelites who came of Egypt, New Testament Christians, modern Christians. Okay. It's a question that is no right or wrong. Eh? It depends on your opinion and where do you come from. Who has it easier to choose life? Was it, was it Adam and Eve? Was it the second generation that came out of Egypt? Was it the New Testament Christians who have seen Jesus and walked with him? Or was it today, for us, we have seen the fulfillment of all prophecies and the certainty of God's word fulfilling right before our eyes? Who has it easy? We are opening this for discussion. Can we have some discussion? Who would like to start? Yes, can I say something? Yes, yes. Yes. I think Adam and Eve has the, has the easiest way to choose life because in, in the days there were not many temptations around. Okay. No distraction, no no uh temptation, no distraction. What else? They have a tendency to choose right. Not like us, huh? we have a tendency 
to choose evil because of our fallen nature, right? You're right, uh, huh? What about the rest? If we take, about, take away Adam and Eve, let's look at uh, second generation Israelites, the New Testament Christians and the modern Christians. Who has it easier to choose life? Anyone else? Julius, what do you think? Or Cynthia, what do you think? Are we able to choose? Uh, we Okay. We are just arguing between the two of us. <laughs> Come and discuss here. Don't argue among yourself. <laughs> well, I was like, everybody had um, equal amount of um, temptation and um, well, like some people said, oh, they, they had the privilege of seeing God in person. Um, yes, but um, I don't know. I, I just feel somehow my answer tends to lean towards everybody is the same. Uh, but he, he said he would not let us be tempted beyond what we can endure. So, but of course, Julius disagrees. So let's hear from him. Okay. <laughs> okay, Julius, what do you think? Well, everybody is born with different experience, different circumstances, under different circumstances, and 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 this is something maybe some many will not disagree. We are born with different predisposition. Some are more predisposed to certain sinful nature than others. Okay, that's how why I say it's not the same. We're not in a level playing field in that sense. It seems to be unfair that life throw you in Americans say a curveball, you know you can't catch it. So but that's how I feel. Okay. All right. Thank you. No right or wrong, eh? everybody has uh, is entitled to their own opinion. Uh, what about the rest? Let's discuss eh? things we got a lot of time, 15 minutes more. Uh, GM, what do you think? Uh, the more modern the time, the more temptations, yes. But uh, then the Bible also says where evil abounds, grace abounds much more. Wow. And then we also have uh, more light uh, given to us especially after the Reformation. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> oh my, I mean, uh, more knowledge of God mm. and His ways. So to me, I, I think God also says He doesn't play favorites. So I, I will think every, everyone has the, an, equal, an equal capacity to choose life. Yeah. You see, some people say Adam and Eve has easier, uh, like what Mr. Sung says. He is right in his own opinion. But don't forget that uh, Adam and Eve has the physical temptation of Satan himself in the form of a serpent. Okay? And uh, it was a direct communication. Today, uh, God will not allow the devil to come in person uh, to tempt us. God will not allow. Remember, God is not the originator of temptation. God only allows. Okay? He allows according to our physical strength to resist temptation. In a way, GM is right. At each generation or each group of individuals, they have their own challenges. Okay? They have their own temptation. 
However, uh, the question is phrased in such a way that we should not find excuse uh, for our neutrality. That means not making any decision. Uh, just now we hear Siu Byok says, it's not easy to uh, commit to God because she has a husband who is not well. Okay. Uh, she is also right from the human point of view. But choosing life uh, is not about having a comfortable life on earth. This is not the thing. Uh. In fact, uh, the epistle of Paul in Timothy says, he who live a godly life uh, will be persecuted. If anyone wants to be my disciple, he must deny himself take up the cross and follow me. So, although choosing life is an easy decision, your expectation of a smooth sailing path should be calibrated in a sense that you are going to die for Jesus ultimately. You are going to suffer on this earth. You are going to put aside your worldly ideas. Okay? And you cannot do it by yourself. This decision to choose life involves having Jesus as your husband, as your partner in, in, in a spiritual life. So it is a relationship. It's not something that you do. See, when you have this idea that in order to choose life, you have to do something. We have to change our mindset. If we have this mindset, we can never be safe. Okay, after the question, uh, this quotation is very appropriate. I would like uh, Cynthia to read this for us. Okay. Every soul has a heaven to win and a hell to shun. When the cases of all are judged, not one will have an excuse. Not one will need to have perished. It was left to their own choice. Who should be their prince? Christ or Satan. All the help Christ received, every man may receive in the great trial. The cross stands as a pledge that not one need be lost, that abundant help is provided for every soul. Okay, any reflection after reading this, Cynthia? I'm still pondering on the, the previous question. Okay. You yeah. said, um, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Continue. Yeah. Um, so I was just asking Julius, I said, well, was it easy for Lucifer to choose life? Did he know if he was going down that path to, to eternal damnation? Okay. Uh, did, he, did he knowingly sin? Of course. Okay, uh, can I direct this back on earth? Huh? Because that happens in uh, heaven. And we are very clear that angels, uh, once they sin, uh, they are not given salvation. And that's very clear. Okay, We are not going to dwell on something that is mysterious. Jesus did not create a gospel or uh, a good news for lost angels. Okay? We should come back on earth. One day we will understand. This belongs to the mystery. Because if we were to research, uh, angels are God's messengers. They are with God all the time. So if they choose to disobey God, their decision is final. Now for us, for some reason, God loves us. We are not angels. We are created beings after God's image. And God, we have studied earlier lessons that this salvation, this plan of salvation, the death of Jesus has been even planned before the creation of this world. Okay. Whether man choose death or life, the plan is there. So in the end, Adam and Eve fell 
uh, plan B kick in. The plan B is to save men, right? And the plan C is if they choose death and they repent, there is forgiveness. So there is plan A, plan B, plan C. So plan B is the good news of Jesus Christ. Okay, next one. Huh? Paul, can you read this for us, Paul? Yes. Um, okay. The power of choice God has given to men, it is theirs to exercise. You cannot change your heart. You cannot of yourself give to God his affections, but you can choose to serve him. You can give him your will. He will then work in you to will and to do according to his good pleasure. Yeah. What do you think, uh, Paul? Based on this reading, uh, mm -hmm. does it give you comfort? Of course. <laughs> huh? Uh, it's just... It says you cannot okay. change your heart. I cannot hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is... Uh, Yes, it's, it is. It's, it's already written here. This power of choice God has given to us. It's our choice to exercise. So we shouldn't change our heart at all. I mean, it's, um, it, it's how I choose to serve him. I mean, um, how should I put it? It's a very simple and very straightforward message here. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I... Okay, <laughs> let me help you. Uh. Let me help you. Uh. This this yeah. passage is very clear. Yes. Our our part on uh, on this earth uh, is to exercise our power of choice to choose life. Then uh, our sinful heart. Uh, what do we do? <laughs> we should give him your will. That means uh, surrender. <laughs> so a lot of people when they choose. To follow Jesus, they did not surrender. They just choose right. only. So when once you surrender your will, God will work in your heart. You because you cannot change yourself. You are sinful. The, the Bible says a leopard cannot change his spot. Right? <laughs> yes. So so come back to the what I'm trying to say. Eh? When you choose life, eh? you are actually choosing to have Jesus working in your life to change you. Yes, amen. Yeah. So when God judge us, he will judge us according to the fruits of our surrender, which is the keeping of the Ten Commandments. But don't <laughs> think that keeping of the Ten Commandments is your own doing unless right. anybody should boast, which is not your, not your choice. Okay. Okay. In summary, eh? chapter 30 of Deuteronomy, Moses gave Israel a choice, life or death, blessings for loyalty to God and consequences for disobeying. And you can see the book of Deuteronomy is looking back as a result of their disobedience and looking forward what's going to happen. The consequences will be the same if they follow their wrong path. And then the last few chapters talk about Moses Although he did not enter the promised land, he was asked to die. Then God raised him. So what was unresolved? What will they do? When will God restore them? When they sin? Will there ever be another Moses? Now all these uh, were unresolved during the time of Deuteronomy. But today we are very clear. We knew, we know the Israelites disobeyed, okay? And then God punished them, sent them into exile. Then later on, God restored them, okay? The rebuilding of Jerusalem. And then Jesus came, they rejected Jesus. And Jesus is another Moses, okay? The great prophet. This we have seen. So for us who have studied history, who have studied the word, it's very clear. It's harder to be lost. Okay. It's easier to be safe. So with this in mind, I'd like to make another advertisement. This afternoon, I will be giving a talk on the Bible principles in anti-aging. Okay, we will find out how we can choose life 
by understanding the lifestyle of the Old Testament. Okay, Adam and Eve diet, Moses diet, New Testament diet. So it's 2.30. Uh, for those who came in late, I will send you the link again. Okay, I'll send you the link. Any questions so far? Um, Pastor, yes. I just want to comment that the, the last drawing and uh, graph, uh, not, not, need, not, is it, um, not only is very, very, what you call uh, eye-catching, uh, but it's, um, it's very pondering uh, for the mind to think. And, and I really like the cartoon. <laughs> It's, it's very graphic and easy to remember what, what you said. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. Silvio, join us again every week. All right, Lawrence. Thank you, Pastor. Ah, just thank you, Anir. Any, any, any comments? Yeah, I think the, the final decision is uh, our own to choose life because we uh, see the whole picture now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Julius or Cynthia. I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, throw in a wrench. Okay. You said that uh, that uh, no such thing as cheap grace, right? Yeah. There's no such thing as cheap grace, which in the, from the con uh, argument from contrary point of view, from the contrary opposite approach, it means life. You could it's going to cost you. It's not free, right? If it's not cheap. That means it's not free. So Christ used to, to, to say that uh, you have to count your costs if you want to follow him because it's not free. There's a certain price we have to pay because it's not cheap. Yeah. And so there's something we need to remember that it does require, I use the word commitment, because there is a price to pay. Okay. Let me uh, add one more thing. Cheap grace uh, is in the context of those people who accept Jesus but want to live the old life. They want to have, it's just like the rich young ruler, want to ask the requirement to have eternal life. But Jesus' answer is very clear. If you want to enter life, you see, eternal life is just part of life. Life is to have Jesus with you and to remove every obstacle that will hinder your relationship with God. The rich young ruler did not see that. He wants the world as well as heaven. You cannot have the cake and eat it too. Like what they, they, there's a saying. You, know? you cannot have the world's riches uh, without God. At the same time, you want the, the reward of eternal life. You cannot. Okay? You have to choose. So once you choose the path, you have life. And that includes all you need according to what gives you. Uh, but if you choose to have the consequences of eternal life, but do not want to follow Jesus, and that is death. And that is very clear. Let's bow our heads for prayer as we end this lesson. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lesson on choosing life. And we know what it entails. I pray that all those, all the, today, this morning, everybody present, they will choose life. They will choose to love Jesus choose to obey him, choose to cling on to him and to have Jesus as their life. May they put aside everything that hinders. I pray for Sylvia. I pray for her husband as well, that you will turn things around. Heal them physically, emotionally and spiritually so that they will follow Jesus and choose life. May all of us Stay faithful until Jesus comes. May the promise that he who overcome will have the right to the tree of life. May he who do the commandments as a result of loving Jesus have the right to enter the, the city and eat of the tree of life. Bless us today with this promise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you everyone. See you next week.